I guess thugs back in the 70s only carry knives. They didn't carry guns. I can see how Bronson got away with that. Okay, so today I'm reviewing the original 1974's Death Wish because next month, I believe March 3rd, Bruce Willis's not so highly anticipated version of Death Wish comes out. So I figure go back and review uh, the original, the first one. And um, I'm going to say, I've, I've only seen this movie one other time before rewatching it again recently because growing up in the 80s, my first exposure to Bronson was Death Wish 3. Because uh, by the 80s, Bronson started doing a lot of films with Canon, and it was mostly action flicks like Death Wish 3 and 4, and then a couple of other movies that I don't really know about. But Bronson was like a hero back in the 50s and the 60s. Like like my pop, that was his guy, Charles Bronson and, and Clint Eastwood. Like Those were his two favorites. So not much of a Bronson fan, but I do remember seeing Death Wish 3 a lot because they used to come on HBO and then they used to show it on regular TV a lot, so that was my first exposure to Bronson. The first Death Wish. A very simple story, very simple movie. Um, Bronson plays a character of Paul Kersey. I believe he's a, a architect or he's some, he's some kind of real estate guy. Something has to do with building houses and, and stuff like that. Uh, he, he, he does something around that area, but he does have a lot of money. And it's, it's just a simple revenge tale. You know, he's just a regular guy, regular Joe, has a family. He's happy. Him and his wife just came back from vacation. And then his wife and his daughter get attacked in very brutal fashion. And the three thugs that did it, one of them I did recognize. I was like, wait a minute. And I paused it. I said, is that Jeff Goldblum? Yes, a young Jeff Goldblum plays a thug in this movie who... <laughs> Uh, I don't mean to laugh at it because it's not really funny, but he, he does some damage to um, Bronson's wife and daughter. He practically loses his family, okay? His family's gone now, and he's like stuck with nothing. And the law, of course, does nothing about it. You know, they act like they're powerless. They can't do anything. He asks, okay, are there any suspects? Are there going to be any arrests? Like, is something going to be done about what happened to my family? And it's like, well, I just, sir, I don't, I don't, know, I don't know what we can do. I just, I mean, we're doing, we're doing all we can, sir. You know, whatever, whatever. So now, the vigilante gears go to kicking in. And so he starts his journey from being just a regular, everyday schmo to now he's a vigilante. And that's what they refer to him as in, in the movie, is a vigilante. So now, he's roaming the streets now looking for people to mug him. And he's just picking thugs off one by one, just killing them. And uh, none of these muggers and thugs and stuff, none of them carried guns. I mean, in today's time, that wouldn't fly because now everybody carries a gun pretty much. So... The fact that he's like a one-man vigilante with a gun wouldn't fly in today's times because everybody is packing with more than handguns. Now they have like AR-15s and shit like that, okay? They, they come with military-style weapons. So Bronson comes with his little handgun now. They, they're going to spray him up like your boy in Robocop. So there's really, really no antagonist. He's just going around just killing thugs and the police are after him and... Eventually, uh, of course, they, they catch up to him and, you know, the cop tells him to, to you know, to ditch town, and never come back. But I'm thinking to myself now, because I'm like, okay, who's the antagonist of this story? The antagonist is almost the police because they're going after the guy that's trying to do good, you know, for, for the community. And they want to take him off the street instead of going after the thugs that's going after everybody else. The police... I guess they took it as maybe, I guess they took it as an insult that he's trying to do their job for them. But there's even a scene where somebody was like, well, since the vigilante's been taking out these um, these um, uh, criminals, the crime rate has gone down, the mugging rate has gone down, and more people are starting to, to step up and fight for themselves. And it's because of him. And then there's the iconic scene that happens at the end where, you know, he does leave town. And he comes across these thugs robbing this lady at an airport, and he helps her out. He looks up, and the thugs are all laughing at him and all that stuff. And he looks at them, you know, he kind of smiles and does the, you know, and that's what you see Bruce Willis do in the trailer. Death Wish, man, like I said, it's really nothing to this movie. It's just a simple revenge tale. But it's not really revenge, though, because he doesn't uh, get back at the guys that actually did that to his family. He never, he never catches them, but he gets everybody else, but it's still satisfying. Bronson has a screen presence. He just has this look about him that you know he ain't the one to F with. Okay, he's just that, he's just that dude 
where you just know you're not going to run up on this guy. Like he just he's he's a man of few words. When he does speak, it's almost like okay, don't speak, just you just use the gun. Yes, Charles Brunson talks like this, and his voice doesn't really match the way he looks. Overall, man, uh, the first Death Wish was a really enjoyable film. Not what I would call an all-time classic. Like it does have it does have the feel of exploitation a little bit. It's a gritty, it's a real gritty kind of low budget um, action piece. And there's not a lot of action in this movie at all. Like there's a lot of times where it does slow down, but there is a lot of killing. Like Bronson takes out a lot of people. Like I mean, he's almost up there with Freddy and Jason as far as his his body count. But there's not a lot of action scenes. Um, the climax was not so climactic, but overall, it was a really enjoyable film. I, I learned that Herbie Hancock did the score to this, and the score was really good. The musical score really added a, a, a really suspenseful element, sometimes horrific elements. Like, there are some musical cues in here where it kind of, like, beefs up the horror and the suspense, and you kind of, like, on edge a little bit. So, yeah, the, the music is a character by itself. Bruce Willis's Death Wish does kind of have a little bit to live up to, I guess, because Death Wish is considered a cult classic. But I will say, I don't think it'll be too hard to surpass it. The one thing that would be hard to surpass is just Charles Bronson himself, because Charles Bronson is such a presence. And Bruce Willis, not so much. I'm not even a fan of Bruce Willis. I Die Hard was like the only thing that I liked him in, in Pulp Fiction, and that was it. Like, I'm not a Bruce Willis fan at all. So I'm going to wrap it up, man. I'm going to give Death Wish, 1974's Bronson's original Death Wish, a B-. minus. It is a really uh, good, watchable action piece. Um, not something that I would like recommend everybody watching, because I know it's not going to be everybody's cup of tea. But if, if, you like, if you're a fan of Bronson, if you're a fan of the action genre, if you like a good revenge tale, even though it's not so much of a, a revenge tale, but if you like a good revenge tale, this movie is definitely for you. So uh, what did you guys think of Death Wish? Are you looking forward to the Bruce Willis version of Death Wish? Comment below. Comment freely. Thank you for watching. As always, this is Rashad G signing out. See you in the next video.